All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Grant with Two Days, and today I'm here with Coach Marino. Coach Marino is the esports director and head coach at Ball State University. Prior to his time with the Cardinals, he developed and launched the esports collegiate program at the College of St. Rose, as well as founded Outlet Sports. With that being said, Coach, thanks for being here. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. No problem. So the first question I wanted to get into was, if you could just tell me a little bit more about the Ball State program as far as a time commitment for an athlete, what games you guys play, if you travel, just anything like that. Sure. So uh, our Ball State eSports program began just about a year ago. Um, there are three different uh, areas within our eSports program, the varsity element, uh, the club, uh, and then academic slash production. Uh, so on the varsity end, we have about 50 students that compete on five different teams. Uh, those games are Overwatch, League of Legends, Rocket League, Valorant, and now Sim Racing. Um, each game has different demands, but on average, uh, you can expect one of our student athletes to spend about 12 to 15 hours a week uh, practicing, reviewing film, um, just meeting and talking about gameplay, uh, and then also obviously going in to the game and, and playing it themselves. Um, <clears throat> each team has two rosters. So for Overwatch, it's a six player game. So we carry 12 players, League of Legends, is five players. We carry 10, et cetera, all the way down the line. So it allows us to get more players involved. Uh, we compete in a number of tournaments and leagues and conferences, uh, just to get more students experience and, and the opportunity to play. Uh, we do do some travel, um, with the, <laughs> we've had a few tournaments canceled because of COVID or weather. So it's been tough the past year, but uh, we do have an element of travel that that's supported through our budget and plans that, you know, with the esports program. So uh, it's built into the expectation of what we do as a varsity program to get out there. It's just been been tough the past few years. Yeah, I bet. I bet everything's gotten affected. So um, next question I had are what are some differences that you see between recruiting for esports and other major sports like football or basketball? Yeah. Um, the way I've answered this question has changed over the past year uh, or past two years uh, because esports recruitment um, is getting more competitive, but it's also becoming more standardized isn't the right word, but, but more streamlined. Um, there are more opportunities to discover, uh, speak with, and then you know, subsequently recruit prospective students. Uh, so that, that piece of collegiate esports has grown tremendously over the past year, but it, it is still lacking compared to traditional athletics. Uh, so, you know, the example I used to use uh, was that, you know, for a traditional sport, you know, say football or basketball or baseball, you can reasonably assume most high schools have those programs. You can reasonably assume that if you need a quarterback or a pitcher uh, or a point guard, you can you know, find a high school with one of those teams with that position filled with esports, it's different. Uh, there's a much larger catalog of games being played. So you might not sync up with a, pro, a high school program. If a high school even has an esports team, uh, then finding the right role, the right person, et cetera, to come to your, your program makes it a little bit more challenging. Now, though, uh, especially in the Midwest states, especially in Indiana, uh, high schools have um, made a bigger push to have esports programs within their schools. So it's becoming a safer assumption, maybe, that high schools have that program. Um, then, of course, there are recruiting platforms and recruiting services out there that kind of facilitate uh, connecting prospective students with uh, colleges. Uh, a lot of work is done through uh, social media and, and messaging apps. Uh, so obviously, our medium is online, electronic. Uh, so that's the medium that we use to recruit. Uh, there's, I mean, we do, obviously, I make high school visits. I go speak to programs, meet students, meet the, uh, the people running those high school programs. But when it comes to direct recruitment, it's typically done all online uh, through social media and, and in-game. Yeah, so that kind of leads into my next question is, since everything is online, is the only way to get noticed by a college coach online or are there tournaments that you guys go out to and showcases and stuff like that that they have mm -hmm. yeah uh there are actually and this is this is one of the nice steps that uh collegiate uh esports recruitment has taken uh is that there will be combine events in fact there's one this weekend in indianapolis um sunday monday and tuesday uh for high schoolers to do just that there are other events around the country where they can go colleges will be there and they can get noticed in that way um 
I wouldn't say it's the primary tool yet, uh, but it's definitely a great way um, just to even network uh, because I know, you know, through the connections I've made with high schools and high school players, um, it's snowballed into different class or different students in those classes having an interest in my program, maybe than the initial person. So uh, it's just a good way, uh, even if you don't necessarily get a recruit from it to just kind of get your, your name out there. Gotcha, for sure. Um, so in a lot of other sports, there is a highlight tape that will get sent to a coach. Is there really such thing as a highlight tape? And if there is, is there stuff you like to see in one? Um, yes and no. I mean, it's when it's tough because in traditional sports, um, really good plays require athletic ability and not everybody possesses the ability to have that athletic ability. Um, in esports, uh, you know, it still takes a tremendous amount of skill to make really good plays consistently, but everybody's on a level playing field with how the games are run. So if you play the game long enough, you'll come into some really nice highlights. Um, it's not a bad thing. I love seeing highlights, but usually they're curated, obviously, to show the best. Uh, so one of the ways we kind of get around that to kind of see how a player actually does in game uh, is to plug them in with our current team uh, and run a practice that way. That way, you know, maybe they still do have some of those highlight moments, but more we can see their skill in context of an actual game uh, and see how they work with our team, how they fit into our culture. Uh, and then it's also a great gauge for them to see how they fit in, see if they like playing with our team and, and you know, the play style we have. Uh, so that's kind of the, the method we take. And I think that's how, mo I don't want to say most, but how, you know, a good number of collegiate programs kind of also will do their recruiting. Gotcha. So when you bring those athletes in and have them play, what other characteristics are you looking in the, looking for in them when they come in and play with the team? Mm -hmm. Nine times out of 10, uh, the, the prospective student we're bringing in, we know already has the skill to be on the team. Um, I, with esports. It's like a double-edged sword because for every game you have a rating or a rank and uh, which is great because it, it lets, you know, uh, directors like me see where you are in context of the player base. Uh, but then it's also kind of a double-edged sword because obviously that comes with inflated egos or even, you know, the less talked about deflated egos uh, that come with going up against uh, players of a higher skill rating. But anyway, to answer the question, um, so we know that the, the, the player has the skill to, to be in the game when, when we're recruiting them. We typically only recruit players sort of in that top 1%, to top 0.5% um, range. And when they're coming in, it's re it really is more of a test to see how they fit in with the, the program. We're looking to see if they can be non-toxic, if they, if they don't tilt or, you know, kind of get into their own heads and, and sabotage a game, whether intentionally or unintentionally. Um, how they communicate, if they can step up and be a leader, uh, and really, again, how they fit into that culture. Because, you know, I always say to my students that when it comes to building our teams, you know, we can put the top five players, the top six players in terms of rank on the team, but it can still fail because of, of intra-team or inter-team uh, issues. So we're really looking for people that fit in to the system that we've built. Uh, even if it means they might not be the best out of all the players we're trying out in terms of raw skill, but they might just fit the mold of what we're looking for. Uh, that'll enable us to, to succeed. 100%. I understand that for sure. Um, so this is the final question I have. Uh, just I wanted to get your perspective on where you want to see college esports the next couple of years as far as recruiting, as well as how big do you think it can get? It's a great question. Um, what I would like to see from it, uh, and I guess on the collegiate end, um, uh, this might be a hot take, but I eventually would like to see regulation around recruitment, uh, especially of current pro players. I don't have a problem with people with pro experience playing in esports, but right now there is uh, a number of current professional players that also play uh, in collegiate, and I understand from the player perspective, why that is. Uh, but obviously, collegiate sports are supposed to be at the amateur level. Uh, so I think that that's a step that I think the industry as a whole should take uh, 
to, to more closely bring us to what we see in traditional athletics, again, where it is a more amateur endeavor. Um, but then as a whole, <clears throat> uh, I don't think we're there yet in terms of it reaching its, its peak point of efficiency and, and uh, even uh, 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 notability in a way. Like a lot of high school students still don't know uh, that they can be recruited for college esports. Because um, especially on our campus, we have 25,000 undergraduate students. Um, with each class that comes in, you know, I will see, let's say, 10 students a semester uh, that had no idea we had esports. Obviously, we have way more students trying to get involved than 10, but, you know, we'll get 10 players each semester that say, oh, I didn't know that college esports was a thing, and they'll be uh, a highly rated player you know, in whichever game that they play. And of course we do what we can to get them involved on the teams. But um, I still think that uh, we're still fighting for some visibility and legitimacy uh, when it comes to uh, collegiate esports. And the colleges themselves have done a great job uh, pioneering. I think sometimes there might be a bit of uh, fatigue with how much uh, each program asks for and puts in. Uh, but it's one of those industries that's just rapidly growing and rapidly evolving. Uh, so colleges that are able to kind of keep their gas or foot on the gas uh, are at an advantage right now, especially when it comes to recruitment, because they're the ones that are able to offer bigger scholarship packages. They're the ones that uh, are able to offer larger travel stipends and budgets and provide housing and, and the things that you would come to expect with larger division one traditional sports programs. Uh, they're starting to incorporate into their esports program. So I think that that might be kind of the, the horizon in the next few years is, is for colleges to really step up their game in terms of how they offer and what they offer uh, prospective students for their, their esports programs. Awesome. Well, yeah, I think that's going to wrap it up. So thank you very much again Absolutely. for meeting with me and uh, good luck growing the program. I'm very excited to see you guys do the next couple of years. Awesome. Appreciate it. Thanks, Grant.